This is Tim Larkworthy from Fig joining the show. Tim, a warm welcome into the program. Uh, that momentary uplift for crude, you see that it's something of a dead cat bounce and an otherwise path of least resistance to the downside story uh, pushing out this week. Yeah, good, mm. good to be with you, Car mm. Carson. I think at this stage uh, it's, it's interesting to see you know, the talk of inflation, certainly in the Bank of England's mind. Uh, 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 Kirsten Forbes, in her last uh, appearance as a, a member of the Monetary Policy Committee, made a statement to the fact that she felt that inflation was going to rise to 3% or thereabouts, which is well, well above the 2% top of the band that the, the, the Bank of England mm. is targeting. Mm. Um, she felt that it could stay at that level for some time, and that was one of the reasons why she decided to vote for a hike in rates at the June meeting earlier this month. I mean, is, which... that, is, is that frankly why she's coming off the committee? Well, she is coming off the committee, but yeah, I think... for good reason, though, because what on earth is she saying that for? Well, look, I think it, her, her comments were also supported by uh, the, the Bank of England chief economist, Andy Haldane. But not, the, early... well, not the governor himself. He said that's rubbish. Sorry? The governor himself stood on that one. He stamped on it a, 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 a night later. Yeah, no, like I, th I think when the, the bank is all, the, the chief economist is also making a comment and, uh, and he's now made a, a comment earlier this week that he feels that he would vote for a, for a rise in rates at some stage over the next uh, six months uh, as a possibility. I think it's still worth, worth keeping in mind. So where is that likely inflation emanating from, pray tell? Well, I think inflation, they're, they're targeting the inflation coming through the, the weakness of the, of the sterling as being the main, the main protagonist as, uh, as the issue to causing ri a rise in inflation there. And do you see that as kind of the, the uh, root and branch type, though, of an inflationary build that they would have expected to be occurring about now? I mean, in terms of the, the bigger picture economy? Well, look, I think it's interesting. Mm. I, I think, you know, certainly central banks around the world talk to each other, and I think mm. there's a general... A general um, jawboning, if you like, of the market at the moment. Uh, I think we've seen that from a number of the central banks, just uh, talking with more of a, a positive outlook towards mm. uh, of where things are. Uh, are. And I'm th I don't think that's a, a great surprise that they, they do talk and they do have a, a bit of a, a, a consensus of thought coming through at any Then again, um, I mean, Fed funds futures, if we bring it all back to the US, uh, are determinedly outside of that group think, are they not, uh, inside the Fed, if, such as it might exist to keep on a raising path. Uh, we are seeing again it's kind of year on year discrediting of Fed projections. Yeah, look, I think the market is, is there's, a, there's a, you know, a battle between where the market sees things going and where the, certainly where the Fed mm -hmm. would like to see things going. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having said that, I think the market is coming to the conclusion that there is, a, is, a, is more of a likelihood that there will be a tightening of monetary policy over the next six months. That'll be December rather than September. Mm -hmm. but, but it certainly will be dependent very much on the data that we see going through. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it was interesting last night in the US, they had an auction of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of uh, 5.6 billion of the 30-year tips, which are the inflation linked bonds that mm. went they went particularly well uh, a 0.88 percent issued there was a coverage rate of 2.84 percent or 2.84 times mm -hmm. which suggests that there is good solid demand for inflation bonds at the moment over there which is mm. you know it, it, indicative of what the, the the banks are saying at the same time that looks like the kind of trickle before the the real gusher as of next week though does it not 88 bill of uh, USTs uh, coming to town, uh, 26 of which are the two-year notes from uh, on a Monday release slated. Uh, what, what's the expectation there? Look, I think there's a lot of supply coming through. Mm -hmm. The indications at this stage are that, that um, you know, the market's pretty, pretty uh, well inclined to, to pick those bonds up. I don't think they're going to see any sort of real blowout in, in, uh, in, in rates. The, mm -hmm. the interesting thing is that the, the Australian 10-year US 10-year spread is still holding around that 20-point period uh, mark. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I guess the risk is that these are historical lows. Uh, mm. We haven't seen these lows. We've only seen these lows on, on two occasions over the last 30 years. Um, I think if there is a risk that, that we could actually see the, the, the Australian 10-year bond go through the US 10-year bond, which would be the mm -hmm. first time for a long time. And, and, and that certainly sort of raises the spectre of Australia being a... Uh, or reduce, removes the spectre of Australia being a high-yield currency. Mm -hmm. And just from thoughts as well, Westpac are tapping uh, US bondholders uh, earlier this week, right? So are we expecting that's the kind of the, the latest, but not certainly the last in that story? Oh, look, I think we'll, we'll continue to see, you know, the, the Australian corporates continuing to tap into that market very much so, yes. Because, I mean, it's just intriguing, is it not, with banks themselves uh, moving on the mortgage book determinedly. Uh, they've got even more reason, do they not, to be uh, augmenting uh, that kind of a cover on margins with what they are doing offshore with funding? 
Yeah, look, it's certainly uh, offshore funding will, will, is attractive and will continue to remain attractive, mm -hmm. particularly if, uh, if our rates uh, uh, you know, stay where they are at the moment. Do we see euro-denominated issuance, though, as maybe now saying to trump the idea of the, a default to the US, uh, to US, I mean, even MTNs, uh, given what we're seeing with the Fed? Um, mm. Look, I think that's uh, you know, uh, 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 not, not, I don't think that's forefront of people's thinking at the moment. No. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Tim, thank you. Appreciate it. Tim Larkley from Fig in Sydney.